Well, I was in need of a miniature plant pot and I figured you might be too, especially with projects coming up in future videos. So I decided today's project would be this cute plant pot that was inspired by a couple I saw online. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, we're gonna start our plant pot by creating a core or a base to build our clay onto because it just makes, we use less clay and get a much nicer looking finished product. To build that on, I have cut a strip of craft colored cardstock that is eight and a half inches, which is the width of the paper, by three fourths of an inch wide. And I have a glue stick here. My glue stick happens to be three fourths of an inch wide and we're only using this as a mold to form our strip around. Um, the, this one happens to be empty. It doesn't even have any glue in it. I'm marking about where this end of the paper wraps around to, me, to me, mark the circumference, basically, of my glue stick. Now, you could use anything that's about the same diameter. You could even go a little narrower. You don't want to go a lot narrower, but a little bit would be okay. And we are going to wrap this around nice and tight. And this way our paper learns what we want it to do. I'm going to take that little bit off because that won't matter. Now it's already preformed into a, a curve. Now I'm going to take some nice thick tacky glue. I'm going to start. This is the side that was inside on our roll and I'm going to spread glue on there and I'm not going to go past this pencil mark we made. I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to spread this glue out. Now, this works as long, I've, I've had really good luck with this method and on the channel I have made many containers with polymer clay starting out with the same kind of paper stock or card stock base. The secret is you have to make sure that this tacky glue is a really thick tacky glue and that it is completely dry, that the glue has cured. And don't rush the glue with a heat gun or anything like that because it's not drying it all the way in the middle that way. The only time I've had a failure on this process is when I tried to rush and tried to use this too soon and the glue had not completely gotten soaked in and cured. Now I'm going to take a little bit of glue and put it on the other side on this free end. That way we've got this nice and secure too. Put our glue stick back in or whatever you're using to form this over and roll it up. Go as tight and as straight as you can because this is what your entire plant pot will be built on. This is our foundation or our base. Sometimes I call it a base, sometimes I call it a core, but it is what we are building on. Now, slide it off. You don't want it to dry on there in case there's any glue on the inside. That would stick it and then you wouldn't be able to get it off. Now that needs to dry completely. I prefer to let these dry overnight if I can, if not at least several hours. So I'm going to let this dry, and when it gets completely dry, I'll come back and we'll start adding our clay details to the outside. All right, the glue on here has dried plenty of time, so I know it's completely dry, and I've rolled out just some female caramel colored clay, because that's a good clay pot kind of color. And since this is three-fourths of an inch in diameter, or the thing I rolled it on is, my three-quarter inch diameter cutter is going to be the perfect size to make a bottom. We're doing this a little differently than when we do the cookie jars because I want the bottom to be very stable and I also want it to be very smooth. So I have two layers. I rolled the clay out using just some regular craft sticks. Now I've got my piece of parchment paper that I'm going to be baking these on because I want I don't want this to stick to whatever it's sitting on. Now I have some liquid clay. This is uh, Sculpey and liquid white which is going to be fine. We're going to use a lot of this today. 
because just like always when we're putting raw clay onto anything other than raw clay, we need to use some liquid clay to act as a glue. And I'm just smearing some on the inside. This will show when we're done, if you look down inside the pot, but we're probably not going to be looking inside the pot. I'm going to put a plant in this one so it won't matter. You could always touch it up with paint if you need to. And then I'm going to kind of get rid of any excess clay on the outside. And now this needs to bake for 10 minutes so that that bottom will be in here and nice and smooth and ready to go. When this bakes and then cools to room temperature, we can add our uh, outside of our clay pot on and do the decoration. So I'll be right back. All right, this is out of the oven. It's baked and cool. And as you can see, there is the white on the inside. If you're going to leave the pot empty, you could cover that with some paint or be neater than I was. So off camera, I rolled out some more of the same clay using the same craft sticks as my guide. And I've rolled out enough that I can cover the outside of my pot um, with it. And I'm going to do my best to remember to stay under camera. I took my markings off my tray because they were getting in my way when I was trying to work. Now I'm rolling this around. I'm going to cut it just a little bit shy of where it needs to be. That's really crooked. It doesn't matter. Because once I add the liquid clay, this is going to stretch out. And I'm going to cut it just a little bit wider than the height that I need because I do want to roll it over to the inside to finish off this top. Now I'm going to cover the ins the um, this surface with more of the liquid clay. Really wishing I had some some clear rather than white, but this is okay. It'll work. Um, and remember this works as our glue. If you're not familiar with liquid clay, I am working with polymer clay. I do have a clay 101 series in progress on my channel. I will try to remember to leave a link to that playlist um, at the end of this video in case you want to learn more about working with polymer clay. Now we're going to roll this up. And it's an ongoing series. I will be adding more videos to that off and on for until we get the subject covered. All right, now Cut it a little short, but like you see, it just stretches out. Now, if your clay is cracking when you do this, it means that you didn't condition it enough and you need to go back and work with your clay a little more before you roll it out. I did find that in uh, many times when I'm making a new project that I've never done before. I will make at least one prototype of the project before I start the video. Sometimes I don't if I feel confident that I know what I'm doing. But on this one, I knew I had some things to work out, and that was one of the problems I ran into. And by the way, since I decorated the different ones differently, at the end of the video, I will try to remember to show you all of them. This is actually number four that I've made. So get this as smooth as you want. Um, I'm kind of just. Yeah, now we need to come up with a texture, and there's a lot of ways to make texture, and that's one of the things I did differently on different ones of my prototypes. Uh, first I used some of my tools I had on hand and I'll show you that one later and it worked okay. Um, I used a fork to make some lines. I did find putting the tape on the fork to give me a spacer worked, made it nice. I used a, a blade to cut some little squiggly lines. I used a dotting tool and I did various things. Then I was trying to think, what do I have that has texture that I could use like as a texturing plate? And I remembered all of these dies that are used to impress cardstock for card making. These are made of plastic, so I will need to clean it off. I don't think the clay will hurt it as long as I clean it really well when I'm done and don't leave any raw clay on it. And the beauty of these is they're made to impress paper. Now one side is an in is an indented design and one is a, a prominent design that goes into that. And to use these, you put them, put a piece of paper in, you run it through a die, a die cutting machine. Uh, this is from before the days of the Cricut and those. So I've got the part that's the design that sticks up, not the part that goes down. And the only trick to this is I did find, I want to have a pencil. 
I'm going to make a mark. This won't show up a lot, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see it while I'm filming, but I'm going to put that down. I know I'm pushing kind of hard. Now, it would be really neat if we could do a design and then put it onto the pot. But the problem with that, now I've gotten to my line, so I'm going to back up. All right, the problem with that is we'll lose all our design when we go to put the clay onto the pot. So now we have a design. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera. This is supposed to be a rustic pot, so I'm not concerned that it's not a perfect design. But you can see, it. hopefully you can see in the camera a little bit, kind of. I am going to go bake this for 10 minutes, and then when it's baked and cooled back to room temperature, we will add our white to it, and then I'll show you all of the pots I made. So I'll be right back. All right, so this is baked and cooled back to room temperature. And the, in person, I can see the design pretty well. On camera, I doubt if you can. And I don't think it picked it up in the photo either. But we're going to change that because now we're going to do the messy part. I tried a couple of different things before I got the thing I like, the way I like doing this the best. Just got some white craft paint. And I'm working directly on a paper towel because this is going to be messy. You don't need much paint. And the only tool you need is your finger. I tried a couple of things and I found my index finger gave me the most control and it's still, you want to be really careful, kind of blot your, almost like you're dry brushing but you're using your finger. And this gives a look like the ones. Now the reason I made these, I was going to, I had planned to have a plant video up on sun last Sunday, but I wasn't feeling well, so I never got it done. But in the process of planning that, I realized I needed some plant pots to put them in. And I was just going to, I was just kind of looking online to see what I could find. I wasn't intending to make this even. I was just going to make one to have. Then I decided, no, I really want to make one. And since I didn't get the plant done yet, I decided we'll do this. And then on Sunday, hopefully I'll be feeling up to getting a plant in this. Now I'm going to go ahead and get this over the top. But this is very reminiscent of the ones I saw online. And I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to get cleaned up. And once this paint dries, which will only take a couple of minutes, I'll come back and we'll look at all the others I made also and talk about what we can put into them. So I'll be right back. All right, our paint is dry, and I really love how this turned out. It reminds me a lot of the ones that I saw online that inspired this project. And like I said, we I was first initially just going to make a plant pot to put a plant in that I was going to make last Sunday and then didn't get that video made. So now you get to see how to make the plant pot, and then hopefully I'll get my act together and we'll have a plant to put in this on Sunday. But let me show you the others I made. So here's the first one I did. This one is really rough, and normally I wouldn't show you my first prototype because usually they're pretty messy and pretty awful, but I wanted to show you you don't have to have the, um, the embossing folder like this. This one I did, it's rough and you would need to be a lot more careful. I just quickly put it together. I had used a fork, and what I did was I put this tape on it so that I would be consistent going around um, for the dots, I just used a clay tool. You could use a totting tool, you could use a bamboo skewer. And for that kind of wavy line, that's this wavy clay cutter. But you look through your stash, look and see what you've got. Here's the first one I did with the uh, same embossing folder to make sure that was going to work. And then I was playing around with, I wanted a small plant pot for something, and I thought, well, I'm going to do the same thing but with blue clay and the same white paint over it. And this is another embossing folder. This one is an embossing folder that's just got blue on it, or just got dots on it, that I used for this blue clay. And I kind of overlapped a little bit, and I kind of like that. 
but those were super easy to make. If you do use the embossing folder, be sure and clean it really well with a wet wipe and get that clay all off of it so that it doesn't melt your embossing folder. So if you've got those on hand, they make great tools for doing your clay. And the white paint on with the fingertip just it really accents this. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure and hop over to the blog for photos and uh, I'll have the dimensions of everything I used and I'll try and get some links to some of these embossing folders if I can find any. Um, but, and if you would like the video, be sure and hit the like button, leave me a comment. What kinds of things would you like to see in future videos? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, be sure and hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up another video. Thank you very much for watching today, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.